Good morning and welcome to the weekend. I'm meteorologist Kevin Smith at the National Weather Service in Pocatello with your weather hazard briefing for Saturday, April 8th. Warming trend equals melting snow. That's really going to be our controlling force here over the next several days. Let's take a look at those key points. We're calling this a taste, of, not just a taste of spring. We're going to call this a taste of summer. Warming trend to those temperatures expected to continue right through Tuesday. Few locations in our forecast area possibly making a run at 70 degrees. Coming up in just a few days here, I'll show you that graphically, break it all down here. The snow will respond to those warm temperatures, though. That's going to ripen up the snowpack region-wide, even at some of the mid to higher elevations across the area. And that will result in some increased runoff, possibly some localized flooding, especially at low elevations. Right now, we're not expecting a massive flood response here over the next few days. But... We're certainly going to make a little bit of progress that direction as we start to melt off uh, some of that impressive snowpack uh, that is in place across most of the region. Do have another storm system on the horizon. This next storm is forecast to arrive Tuesday. May last a couple days as well. Some rain and snow showers, cooler temperatures with that. Right now, we're not seeing terribly heavy rainfall or snowfall amounts out of this, so that's good news. But there is quite a bit of uncertainty with exactly how this next system is going to behave and exactly what track it's going to take. So stay tuned as we continue to iron that out here over the next several days. Speaking of that warming trend, congratulations, Idaho Falls. 51 degrees, your high temperature yesterday. That's after 150 consecutive days below 50 degrees. That streak has finally ended for you. Of course, we've already done that a couple times here at Pocatello, but a sign of things to come as those warmer temperatures build across the region. Your weather risk outlook this morning looks a little busy. Most of this is due to increased melting and runoff. So I'll, I'll pause here just for a moment for anyone who wants to take a look at their geographic area of interest. Basically, Saturday into Sunday into Monday, those warmer temperatures resulting in that increased melting of snowpack, some increased runoff. Again, a little bit of localized flooding can't be ruled out, particularly at lower elevations. Possibly some rises on some of the smaller streams and creeks as well. Probably a little too early, luckily, uh, for mainstream river flooding. We're going to have to wait just a little bit further into the spring season here. A little bit of breeziness starting to come in on Monday as well, particularly Snake Plain, Eastern Magic Valley, South Hills, possibly up into portions of the Central Mountains and Lemhi County as well as that next system approaches. But we're going to hold off till Tuesday to start bringing in rain and snow showers across the region. Snow showers generally confined to the Central Mountain region, rain showers elsewhere based on temperature. And then by Wednesday, we cool those temperatures off a little bit. That should help to stabilize some of that melting and runoff concern, but continued rain and snow showers. Again, right now, not looking terribly heavy as far as precipitation amounts, but quite a bit of uncertainty there. We'll continue to look at that here in the days ahead. This actually big picture is not a bad scenario. Um, we, the longer we hold off on not getting warmer temperatures into our region, the longer we wait to start melting out some of the impressive snowpack that is in place. So if we can start to see these warm ups, particularly for just a couple days at a time, start to chip away at a little bit of that snowpack, but then have a system come in and cool those temperatures a little bit like we're expecting Wednesday, that cooling of the temperatures slows things down, stabilizes things just a little bit. And if these systems like this one that's coming up don't have a ton of heavy precipitation with them, that is good news as well as far as keeping that flooding under control. So this is not a bad scenario, big picture, even though, again, a few locations might see a little bit of flooding. Not good there. But big picture, this is kind of what we want as we start stepping into uh, more spring-like weather here across southeast Idaho. Satellite loop this morning, there are some clouds out there. Uh, there are actually a few light snow showers out there too, particularly down across the Southern Highlands into Bear Lake and portions of the Eastern Highlands south of Driggs. Quite a bit of dry air at the surface and not all of you are actually seeing anything reach the ground. Um, even if you look at the radar, not everything you see on the radar is even reaching the ground this morning due to some of that dry air. But whatever activity we have is going to end pretty quickly here early this morning, particularly before 10 a.m. And then we're smooth sailing with those warmer temperatures, high pressure building in across the region. We'll see some periods of high clouds drifting through as well here over the next several days. 
Watches, warnings, and advisories. Uh, we do have a flood watch that is in effect for portions of northeastern Nevada, and we do not have flood watches in place right now across southeast Idaho. Again, because we think if there is a little bit of flooding and some elevated runoff, it's going to be somewhat localized right now, not looking at a particularly widespread, impactful flood scenario. So that's the good news. But we'll continue to keep an eye on that here over the next several days and just do be prepared for a little, a little bit of that localized activity here. Let's walk through those temperatures the next few days because, again, that's going to kind of control all of this. Low temperatures this morning shown over here on the left. Here's the highs that we're headed to over here on the right. And you can see 50s surging across the eastern Magic Valley into the Raft River, right up decent portions of the Snake Plain, possibly to Idaho Falls once again today. 40s are high temperatures for most of the rest of our population centers. Same setup here for Sunday. Still cool during the early morning hours with those low temperatures, but over here on the right, lots of progress. 60s now building into the eastern Magic Valley and Raft River region. 59 to Pocatello, 55 up to Idaho Falls. 46, not bad, up to Island Park. 55 all the way up to Chalice, 53 for Stanley. So it's going to be noticeably warmer. Again, taste of spring, if not a taste of summer with really our first round of warmth here for the year across Southeast Idaho. Monday, we do even better. Now we start to see some areas here on Monday, if you look at the left graphic, where low temperatures are holding in the mid 30s to low 40s, particularly here in the Eastern Magic Valley into portions of the South Hills and a few other locales. So that is something we do keep an eye on because if we can't cool below freezing at night, we're not gonna slow down and stabilize some of that melting and runoff as effectively. So. We'll keep an eye on that, that we'll keep things uh, running out there as far as the water. And then look at these temperatures Monday over here on the right, 71 in the Jerome and Twin Falls area, our current forecast. Also for Burley, 60s right up through Pocatello and Idaho Falls. Driggs possibly 60, reaching that 60 degree mark as well, 52 down to Montpelier. Tuesday, we're peaking. Uh, this is the morning where the majority of the forecast area actually may not fall below freezing at night. You can see 46, our forecast low temperature for Burley, even up to Chalice, 40 degrees, 33, our coldest temperature currently forecast Tuesday morning in Island Park. Um, so as we, we get out to our warmest day here, definitely going to have to keep an eye on some of that runoff. And then temperatures again, possibly 70 into the Eastern Magic Valley, but 60s for many of our other larger population centers, particularly in the Snake Plain. And finally, Wednesday, here's those cooler temperatures coming in. Remember, Tuesday kicks off our showers. Wednesday, we continue to see rain and snow showers, and you can see cooler low temperatures and high temperatures even backing off into the 40s and 50s. Um, which hopefully will help to slow things down and stabilize things just a bit, and hopefully we'll keep those precipitation amounts out of this next system relatively light. So with all this in mind, with the warmer trend moving in, we do have a few bullets here for you on the subject of flood preparedness and flood mitigation. Some very simple things that we encourage everyone to do. Uh, as soon as you can this weekend, just to help things along here the next few days. First, clear any snow, ice, and debris from culverts and other flow paths on your property and along the street to allow that runoff to flow away from buildings and infrastructure. Let's help things drain and run off properly here over the next few days. Make sure those storm drains are clear. Anytime we have blocked storm drains and that water can't go, it's going to continue to flow and it's going to go somewhere. So make sure the storm drains are clear. Uh, try to move deep snow away from the foundations of buildings, particularly if you do see some seepage or flooding typically in the spring. Be a good idea to do. Be mindful of equipment and livestock that may be located in poorly drained areas or low-lying areas. Again, with that runoff, with ponding of water possible over the next few days, try to get ahead of that if possible and move equipment and livestock out of those areas. Remember, do not drive through flooded roadways. We always encourage everyone, turn around, don't drown. Very important safety tip. Not out of the question, we may see a few spots flood. Here as we go through the weekend into early next week. And finally, if things do change or a particularly our particular area becomes kind of a problem spot for us water-wise, do monitor for any watches, warnings, and advisories that we may be issuing from our office. The good side of all of this, this is our latest drought monitor 
for our forecast area here in southeast Idaho. And we actually have some of our area that is completely out of not only drought conditions, but not even shaded for abnormally dry anymore, which would be the yellow shading. You can see some areas still a little bit abnormally dry. This has been a very long duration drought we've been dealing with for years, but this is the best our forecast area has looked on the drought side of things for several years. So definitely good news there. All of the water, all of the storms we've seen, all of that high elevation snowpack really making a difference at bringing us back to where we should be on the hydrologic front. And that's what we're looking at here over the next five days. As always, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments, or concerns. Everybody have a great Saturday.